Landing on an aircraft carrier is already risky, but it becomes even more dangerous when things go wrong. That's what happened to Captain George Duncan, a test pilot who was trying out an F-9, F-5 Panther. The airplane veered off course and crashed into the edge of the flight deck, causing it to break in half. One might assume that the pilot's fate was sealed, but that is not what happened. Fortunately, the quick-thinking flight deck crew sprang into action and were able to rescue the pilot and quickly extinguish the flames. After six months of recovery, Captain Duncan returned to the skies and eventually became a lawyer. Be sure to smash that subscribe button so you do not miss out on our latest content. Now let's get back to the video. Nowadays, when pilots land on aircraft carriers, they follow standard procedures and apply full throttle upon touchdown. If they successfully catch one of the three or four resting wires, the aircraft comes to a complete stop. In case a pilot misses the arresting wires, applying full throttle can provide enough power for the aircraft to take off again. This maneuver is commonly referred to as a bolter. The pilot will then attempt to land again during the next pass. However, in the early days of aircraft carriers, this wasn't always an option due to traditional flat-top designs, which lacked the modern angled flight deck. During the early days of aircraft carriers, the planes had to land in close proximity to the other parked aircraft, leaving very little room for error. In response to this challenge, emergency flight deck barriers were added to the end of the landing area. These barriers, which were approximately three feet tall, would then be lowered after a successful landing to allow the plane to be moved to the parking area. In case of any mishap during landing, such as a broken tail hook, the deck barriers played a critical role in preventing the aircraft from colliding with the flight deck crew or parked planes. However, upon hitting the barrier wires, the aircraft often suffered extensive damage and in some cases, even caught fire. During the early days of aircraft carriers, the flight deck crew was just as vulnerable to injury as the pilots, as the barrier wires could fly around and cause harm. In some instances, the wires were not enough to stop the aircraft, leading to the need for a better solution. Fortunately, the pilot of the aforementioned aircraft was successfully rescued by a helicopter. Today, barrier wires have been replaced with barricade netting that resembles a tennis net. The modern barricade emergency recovery system features multiple engagement straps, each around 20 feet tall. When an aircraft enters the barricade, the release straps break, and the engagement straps come into action, transferring the load to the barricade engine located beneath the deck through a purchase cable. Typically, the barricade is stowed away and only deployed during emergencies like tail hook or landing gear malfunction. Fortunately, a highly trained crew can set up a barricade in under three minutes. Once an aircraft has been successfully arrested, the webbing and deck cables are removed and disposed of properly. Although infrequent, barricade arrestments still happen occasionally, which is why all American aircraft carriers are equipped with them. Despite being challenging for pilots and causing significant aircraft damage, these types of landings are still preferable to the alternative. Barricades have saved countless lives over the years and are an indispensable tool for aircraft carriers. While it's something you hope you never have to use, when the need arises, you are grateful to have it. Thank you and make sure to subscribe so you do not miss out on new videos.